When you look at a challenge, do you see a problem or an opportunity? Because lately we're no stranger to either one. We all have things that motivate us. Things that we fight for. And if discomfort's our new normal, then we like our chances. Our fight's bigger than football. But you won't find any white flags around here. Because no matter what the challenge is, the stakes are always high. So raise them up. Welcome to another episode of the Loose Cannons Podcast. I am your host, Sammer. I'm hanging with my boy, Stank. I'm hanging with Poppy Latte. We are part of the Bucks Report family of podcasts, and this podcast is proudly brought to you by Red Cat Plumbing. Hashtag Tampa Proud. Guys, it is week one. Week one has arrived. We have finally, finally fucking made it. I can't, I can't believe it's even real. Tonight, we get to watch football. The Bucks play on Sunday. Lightning play on Sunday, too. It's kind of fucking weird. We're going to have to use two TVs or whatever. Bro, I'm fucking hyped. You guys are hyped. Christian kind of looks like he's asleep, but... Not asleep. I just had a serene moment. I had you know some candles lit, and <laughs> some oils lit, and I was, uh, you know, I was manscaping in the... Uh, the eve of the NFL season, and you know, you got to be prepared. You got to make sure you, that the, you know, the, you have to. You know, everything's nice and smooth. So, I mean, you brought something very important up, bro. Like, you got to be manscaped. You got to be. You got to be scaped. You know what I mean? Like, you Man. can't come to the table and look all unscaped. Absolutely not. I mean, I I leave that stuff up to the harem girls, but you best believe I get manscaped three times a week. Like, that's a big deal, man. And sometimes, sometimes, check this out. This is something I'm going to do this season only. All right. Friday before the games, I'm going to start having the predicted score of that game carved into my junk. I'm doing it. Yep. Are there trimmers? I that like can, it. Are there trimmers out there that can do that? Are there trimmers? I think your trimmers can do that, bro. <laughs> I'll take some 245 trimmers down there. Why not? All right. Let's talk about some real shit. <laughs> Mike Evans hamstring. What's going on? <laughs> I, I don't understand. These Soft fucking tissue. hamstrings. I, didn't even say, I don't even know if I said that right. I don't even know. If I, said, I don't give a fuck. Listen, I'm mm-hmm. tired of this shit. I was fucking traumatized by it last year. And mm, what is going on? Alex Guerrero. What is going on, Alex? Because that's the real truth about the Brady signing. We brought Brady in, so we'd bring you in, so you fix the shit. What the? I mean, do we do we know that it's his hamstring? Or we are at soft tissue. Could be his groin. I, I didn't hear that. I, it was definitely a hamstring pull. No, I Everybody think on the official. I think on the official injury report it says hamstring. Oh, yeah, in the official injury report it says hamstring. Yeah, I don't think. I honestly, man, I know this is fucked up, and I know most teams get in trouble if they do stuff like this where they lie and play some kind of a you know of a mind game when it comes to the injuries i partially believe the truth is being stretched here with him being injured and it might just be one of those precautionary things because if you remember most of the time at the beginning of the seasons and during camp mike struggles with hamstring and with cramping specifically in his hamstring so i'm curious if this is just to kind of just be safe all right, make sure he doesn't pull a hamstring before week one. And maybe it is a little sore and tender, but, you know, we have Stank for that. And now that, you know, unfortunately our boy is no longer on the team. So, Stank, your hands need to be used properly. You Listen, need to I'm right help down Mike the out. street from the facility. Um, I've been doing lots of hands exercises because I'm out of work right now. Uh, so, you know, I'm just waiting for the call. Jason Light, Brian Ford. Joe Glazer. This here, this entire segment. You no, know, you guys know what I can do. Uh, just give me a call, man. I'll get I'll get him right, bro. I already got that Miyagi in me, dude. I'll get that shit. I'll get his Yeah, exactly. I, I think I actually, he plays. Have, I actually have a tub of this that's that's constantly being heated to 102 degrees, um, which is the proper temperature for you know, getting nice and deep like 
Well, I, I know people. In. I know people that know mm. people. So I have the I actually have the industrial size with the pump. I got the pump action. So I don't even need to, you know, squeeze. I it. get it by the barrel, bro. I don't even know what a pump is. I you can't know that happened to me one time. I, I can't even park my car in the garage anymore. It just I have barrels of baby oil. Real life story. Real life story here, guys. I used to work for a cable company, I used to install cable back in the day. Find myself in somebody's bedroom installing the cable box. Look over to the freaking dresser or the, the nightstand. There is a fucking big ass bottle, probably double the size of the Bex, with a pump action tap on the top of Astro Glide. <laughs> Astro Glide, people. Just right out there in the open. I, I looked at the chick. I looked at the dude that was installing it with me. I looked back at the chick. She said, mm hmm. I said, oh shit, we're about, we're about to shoot a real life porno. It didn't happen. You know, the sweaty oh, cable man. guy, it never happens. You think it happens. But it doesn't happen. Sorry, I just had to interject there with that real. It really it, happens. It's fine. You guys think Industrial you guys think your size pump fucking Astro Glide. Do you think Mike plays on Sunday, man? Wow. I do. I, I segue really do. back into football. Professional yeah. segue. That was you great. gotta love it. It's phenomenal. L listen, man. I, I I I hope he plays. I think he will play. But I'm also on the side of if there is any actual injury there. If it's minor and you don't want it to linger long term, let him sit, man. We got a plethora of weapons. We've heard about it all fucking off season. So why not just let him sit? We have three wide receiver ones on this team. I mean, if Mike Evans takes a seat, no big deal, right? We got Godwin. We got Scotty. We got OJ Howard, Gronk. We got Rojo. We got Fournette. I mean, come on, man. Mike could take a day off. He could. I mean, you want to be at full strength, but you're not wrong. We've got a multitude, a smorgasbord of weapons. And, uh, you know, they're going to figure out, just like the Patriots were multiple, one week you're facing a running team, the next week you're facing a passing team, the next week they're running three tights. Like, they, that's the kind of offense you really want, right? You want to keep defenses off balance. You want to keep them guessing. Clearly you want Mike Evans out there. If he's available, if he's ready. Uh, the guy needs to play because he puts pressure on defenses. He's going to take Lattimore uh, and keep him busy versus putting Lattimore on, on somebody else. Um, I don't know. I don't know that with no training camp, with no you know real competition during the offseason, that either of these defenses are, ne are necessarily going to be able to hit the ground running. Because I, 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 know I foresee a high-scoring game. I don't know about you guys. I honestly feel like – the first few weeks of the season because of no actual like preseason games, I think defenses are going to dominate the majority of these games. I think offenses are going to take a little bit of time to get going. The Saints might have the upper hand because, again, they play together. And Tom and them, like Tom said today, they don't really know what they're even good at yet on offense. So they're going to kind of just go in there and try things when the real bullets are flying and see what happens. With that being said, if Mike seems to actually have an injury and instead of just taking the chance of, you know, messing it up longer term, let him sit knowing that the offense is probably going to come out to a slow start across the league for the most part and just let the defense win the game. Cause I really think the defense, these guys have been in the system at this point. It's just going out there and hitting guys and you know, they can't wait to do it. Nothing's happening on your pipe. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I, I kind Christian of, right now is just setting the mood. Go ahead, go ahead, it, it, It's rare, it's rare, but I agree with Samer. I think, I think the, uh, I think the offenses are going to be a little bit behind for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, hot take here. I, I think. Listen, a couple offensive linemen for the Saints are hurt. I think it, Ruiz, Ruiz, the guard is hurt. Didn't practice today. That's not a good sign. It, call me crazy, Stank, but I think they're going to knock fucking Drew Brees around. Thank you. I really do, man. And, and my I, I best agree. Robert De Niro face. Oh, that's, they, they're going to knock him around, bro. You look they're like going to fucking have to take knock him around. You look like you ha you're constipated. What happened? Well, you know, I am. Bro, that's the De Niro thing. You got to push gotta, one out. Got to take this phone call live on the podcast. I have to. Oh, man. Wow. Really? And that's okay. Listen, we're professionals. Sometimes you got to take phone calls, bro. <laughs> all right. We all own businesses. Phone calls come in. Red Cap Plumbing. Hello? Hello? I, I don't Bucks think... report. Hello? <laughs> hey, you know you know Hello? what? You know what? Speaking of red cap plumbing, um, 
if you guys haven't heard, we have an official sponsor of the show now, Red Cat Plumbing, and they're going to be hooking us up with some dope ass Tampa proud t-shirts that we're going to give out at our live events. That's right. You heard it. We have live watch party events with live pregame shows coming up. We're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's on the venue. We will be announcing that very, very, very soon. And also, we will be giving away shirts and they have their own line of hot sauces that's coming out. And we will be giving those bottles away to the four or five best phone calls that we get on our live post game shows following every single Sunday or Thursday or Monday night matchup with the Bucks. It'll be one hour after the game has ended. We will get on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, everything. We will go live. We will take phone calls, let you vent or let you call in and rub our faces and anything we got wrong. It doesn't fucking matter. Or just come on there and just yell a bunch of shit because you're fucking happy that we're finally winning. I don't but, like rubbing my face on one thing. Two things. Baby Ooh. oil. Anyways, uh, I can't wait, I, dude. We have a, we have some cool shit this season. We have some this cool is, shit this season. And this week is hate the fucking Saints week. Fuck those guys. Fuck the Saints. Fuck, fuck the, the Saints. Saints. Fuck the Saints. Fuck hey, Sam, hate the Saints real, real quick before we move on to real football talk, since sometimes we get criticized for not talking about Buccaneers football. And for those who do criticize us, anyways. Uh, who criticized us for not talking Bucks football? Uh, you know, I've seen them, bro. I've seen them out there. Really? Hey, the little, hey the birdies. you know what I'm they saying? Tweet. All I see is love. They you tweet. ain't listen, man. If you ain't doing it right, and you don't got haters, then you ain't doing it right. You know what I'm saying? I agree. You know what I'm Samer, saying? So bless recently, up. Recently, you you posted a link on Twitter for a Loose Cannons merchandise store. Yet, oh, we have yet to talk about it on the podcast, um, but I've seen merchandise out there already. There's people out there who have Bucking Idiots t-shirts, and I don't even have one. I don't have one either. I don't even I'm own one. one. I, I don't own one. I don't own one either. I don't either. I'm so sorry. But there are fans out there who have them already. Those of you who do wet. want... Those, those, need those, wet. Yeah, those of you who follow us and you guys know all about our weird shirts and the, the dry rub versus the, the sauced up wings and the blue cheese versus the ranch, we've got all those cool shirts on loosecannonsmerch.com. And I'm sick of talking about all this other stuff now, so let's go back to football because people apparently think we don't talk enough about the Bucks. Hmm. I thought we have, but whatever. So... They, we, I don't, I don't think we really got the uh, three of us talk about Fournette joining the Bucks and what his role will be in Week One against the Saints. Now, uh, Coach BA came out and said, "Rojo's our guy right now. Fournette's going to have to find his role," and I fully believe that. But as the season goes on, I don't see how it doesn't end up being a fifty-fifty split at the most. Between Other the two than of them. protections, bro, running back is the literally the easiest job to learn on in any offense. I mean, you you've got the same playbook across the league. Some of your your pass sets and things like that that takes a little bit more time to learn. Your protections, your calls, and learning the verbiage of the the offense is going to be the biggest hurdle for Fournette. But you can plug this guy in, and he can produce right away. And you can't say that about really any other position on the team other than maybe kicker or long snapper or you know position where you just have one job it's an instinctive position you are you know the guy's the guy's gonna play he's gonna play over rojo right away probably not but like what i foresee is terrifying for defenses you know we're rolling and we get a lead holy shit put fournette in the game and just Smash mouth. Embarrass defenses, bro. Make them tackle Fournette. Nobody wants to tackle a guy like that. Nobody. I promise Dude, you. Just mixing him in with Rojo throughout the game, it's just going to make it easier for Rojo. Because yeah. they're tackling that big guy. Rojo doesn't run like a small scat back, which we first initially, yeah, when we first saw him in the league, that's what we thought he was going to be. He's a bruiser now, too. He can hit mm -hmm. you. And, you know, Coach Luke went over some of that stuff with us last, you know, on the last episode. But. Having a guy like Fournette kind of, you know, knock on that that defensive wall a little bit, and then have Rojo come in after that dude. Them working together is just going to help each other out. And plenty of teams have had the one-two punch. You have to have it nowadays. The only thing that holds Fournette back, honestly, is the fact that he hasn't really worked with Tom yet in terms of catching passes, how Tom likes him to run his routes. Rojo has the upper hand on that. But as the season goes on he's going to bridge that gap and they're basically going to be even. And at that point, it's just two guys going at it, being happy, being teammates and just 
come stop us, bro. What the fuck? Guys. Nice. Nice. Hey, real quick, before I, before you go, Christian, let me just say one more thing. Let's not forget, this guy has already been in camp. It's not like he's out of football shape. He was in camp in Jacksonville. So he's he's been preparing his body. He's been practicing football over the off season and through camp with Jacksonville. He's already he's coming in here, you know, it's as ready as you can be without a preseason, ready to go. Go ahead, Christian. No, no, we were just talking about the smorgasbord of, of, of weapons. We just we just spent, you know, 15 minutes there talking about Rojo and Fournette and how insane that combination has the potential to be. And if we get a lead, watch out. And we haven't even talked about fucking LaShawn McCoy. Like, we still have no, fucking Shady McCoy. Like, what, like, what, what the f- He's the I know we've been here before, guys. But how, what do you do as a defense? I mean, Really? And you still got OJ and 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 Gronk, Scotty, Bray, who is unequivocally wide receiver one. And then you have Godwin. It's just, it's stupid. I'm looking forward to it. But I I, I said earlier that, that like Samer said, I think the defense is going to be ahead. I think they're going to beat. They're going to push him around. I think they're going to beat. They're going to get to Breeze. And I think Devin White sets the fucking tone this week. Straight up, I think he sets the tone. I think Bowles is going to fucking. This kid is ready to. He's going to unleash him, bro. He's going to unleash him. I honestly think Bowl he's going to. Are we going to do bull predictions? We'll get to it, man. I honestly think that the entire defense is going to be unleashed because they played last year somewhat reserved in terms of the entire playbook. And and Todd Bowles didn't really have as much fun as I think he would want to in terms of moving stuff around. We're going to see White coming off the edge. We're going to see Levante blitzing heavily. We're going to see these guys coming out there and knowing the defense and flying around. And I think they – honestly, I really think – the Bucks defense is going to control this game. And I'm not saying that because I'm a Bucks fan. I just I have this feeling that these guys have figured it out and that they're going to get to Breeze at a, at a rate that's not going to – it's going to basically make his passing and the Mike Thomas connection basically ineffective, man. It's not going to matter. Like, I don't even think they're going to score more than 13 points. Whoa. Wow. Listen, I hope you're that. right. I hope you're right, but – it's doubtful. I don't see that happening at all. I think this is a high-scoring game. In mm-hmm. the NFL, I don't care how dominant your defense is. An offense like New Orleans is going to score some points. I mean, if we if we really do get to breeze consistently, that we may be able to stop the bleeding a little bit. But I don't see anybody holding an offense like that to 13 points. Uh, but I could be wrong. I hope you're right. I just don't do, – I don't do. see that defensive dominance coming out of this this young Bucks. Uh, roster against a team like they're the not right away. They're not, not right away. Not right away. They're not as young as you think, man. The backside young. is young, but dude, the guys up front have been here. They know what they're doing. They played in the league. JPP's not old, not young. Sue's not young. Levante David's not young. Uh, well, don't forget, Breeze doesn't get hit a lot because Breeze the is the king of getting the ball out of his hand quick. I get that, so, but man, right. they are going to be rusty. It's going to be week one. The Saints notoriously do not they show up right. week one. What's what that? What kind of X factor is problem. having? Go Here's ahead. The, the counter argument to that, and I think what Stank's trying to say, and, and, and I agree, we have a phenomenal fucking front seven, but it's got to work in, in sequence with the back end. And if, if it's not, if they're not making beautiful music, it, it doesn't matter how good the front seven is. So although I think they're going to play good and it's going to be fine, I understand Stank's reservations as far as it's still going to be a shootout because unless these kids come out playing the way they did at the end and Anton Winfield comes out playing like fucking Earl Thomas's rookie year, like some fucking nuts like Tyron Matthew, they're going to give up some points. Yeah, but uh, let's not forget Sean Payton is, you know, I fuck the guy. I hate him, like, the guy? for real. I actually don't like the guy. Like, for real, don't like him. You, you said just that, said right? you, you just you said you the, fuck you said, Sean Payton. Sean, Sean Payton, you said, I fucked the guy. You, what? I, 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 did I say that? I, mean, <laughs> I, I already told you before I came on here, I've had a, a couple drinks. And maybe in a dream, and maybe in a dream, I fucked him to death. I don't know. I can't, I don't know. I don't know. Fuck the Saints. Fuck Sean Payton. But wow. let me get back to my original point. The guy knows his shit. The guy put up numbers numbers against us with Teddy Bridgewater last year against a Todd Bowles defense. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend like we're all of a sudden the 85 Bears. We're not. We're not. That, okay? I th- it's I, going I th- to be a shootout. I think you're missing my point here, man. My, my point here is that the front seven is going to be so dominant 
that these guys in the back end don't have to cover guys for five seconds, six seconds, seven. Like, that's when I know Breeze gets his, the ball out quickly. But, man, these guys are coming in with something that we haven't seen in our secondary in I don't even remember how long. And that's called swagger and confidence. Mm-hmm. These guys are confident. Dude, Carlton Davis, he's turning the fucking corner. He's there. We have a guy in a second in his second year in SMB who already thinks he's the best in the fucking league. He walks like it. He talks like it. Bro, he's going to fucking play like it. When those guys have that type of confidence, they're going to come up there. They're going to play on the receiver. They're, they're going to make those quick, easy slants and quick passes hard to complete. Even if there is a hot read, if they're on their... Their, their keys, those hot reads aren't going to happen. Breeze has to hold it one second later, boom, he's sacked or he's hit or he's running for his life. That's all that you have to do against these Saints teams. It's always been the MO against these, you know, even Peyton Manning type teams. Get to the quarterback, even Tom Brady teams, keep that in mind. Um, you get to these guys early and they are rattled. They can't do it. And I just do not see how any defense in the league is going to be able to stop the Bucks' offense enough even if they are rusty, like I'm saying, like in this first game or first maybe three weeks, enough to slow them down compared to what their offense has to overcome on the defensive side. I just don't see it, man. I honestly believe it's a 13-point output for the Saints this week. I'm, I don't I'm, see that again. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. that. I'm not going with that. I'm going with it. Listen, I'm I absolutely be, going I, with I, it. I will, I will celebrate that if it does occur. I'm not saying it's not possible. I just... I, I honestly don't see it. I really don't. This this team, I, I will, a veteran team, you know, Breeze came back for a reason. I have a feeling we're in for a fucking dogfight, bro. I really feel like it's going to be a high-scoring game, that the team that makes the least mistakes, that the, the defense that comes out with the most stops is going to win the game. I mean, that sounds obvious. I'm like, oh, the defense that gives up the less point, least points hey, is going to win the game. Yeah, yep. You know what I mean. Scoreboard, yeah. I, I, I can see that happening, too. I'm not saying I, I don't, but I just I got this feeling, man, that it's just going to be a defensive type of game just God, across the be league. Beautiful. It's been across so long. If we hold the Saints to 13 points. I will make Samra's face my phone background until next week. Yes. Get ready. I'm going to send you the world's greatest photo, bro. But listen, listen bro. <laughs> I'll put I'll put I'll put a picture of you on the wall in my master bedroom. All right. I'll send you the nude so your wife can see it. Check it out. We talked about the young secondary, right? We talked about the young secondary, and we didn't even touch on the fact that Antoine Winfield Jr. is a starter on paper. I know that that, you know, kind of comes with a little bit of a caveat because he's probably going to split time with Edwards and and the other guys that are on in, the, in that, you know, in that safety room. But the fact that he was listed on that initial 53-man roster as a starter is fucking huge. <coughs> That speaks volumes to what this kid is going to do as a rookie coming in here and being prepared enough that a coaching staff with this kind of defensive playbook, bro, they put this guy in as a starter. I can't fu- like he's. I cannot wait to see him play. Like I don't even fuck about Tristan Wirfs. I can't wait to see this guy get on the field. I love Tristan. Don't get me wrong, but dude, you got to be excited about about Winfield, man. You have to be. Listen, I, when I first saw the depth chart, I was like, oh, that's just depth chart bullshit. But um, Todd Bowles came out today and, you know, reiterated that Antoine Woodfield Jr. is the starter on this defense um, because he's just shown he, that he's worthy of it. He won, this, he won this battle in camp. That's impressive as fuck. That just yeah. goes to show – that what we saw, you know, us, us uh, YouTube scouts saw on film and those who actually follow college football very closely, you know, Draft Network and, and Trev and all these guys who were really high on Antoine, uh, that just shows it's already sh- he's already shown it's carried over on the field against Tom Brady. Thank you. You know, in practice. So if a rookie's I mean, going to look bad, it's going to be against Tom Brady in, in, in his practice. first training camp Inside ever. Her. Sure. I'm not excited, I'm not excited um, so, to see Antoine Winfield. I'm not excited. You're not excited? What, I'm dude? Not excited. Dude, if, if 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 I had to pick a rookie to be excited about, it's Keyshawn Vaughn. I don't think Keyshawn Vaughn touches he's not the even, ball. He, he's going to play time. special teams I don't as think a he guy. One carry in this I'm game. Not even kidding. one. No, oh, man. Jesus. I don't know with you, bro. You cried for like six days about the uh, Clyde Edward Hilaire things. I don't know. I'm over it. I'm I don't over know. It. I, I, you're going to watch him tonight. 
I only draft him in three out of three out of my three fantasy exactly. leagues. <laughs> I, I know you're watching the game tonight. Just to say, I told I you guys. An obsession. I don't have an obsession. There's nothing. <laughs> Whatever, wrong with man. Me, okay? Listen, think about this for Antoine, bro. Think about this. Usually, <laughs> your parents are your biggest fans, especially when it comes to like sporting, right? And his dad told him. I'm surprised that you won it this quickly in terms of the starting job. I thought maybe week three or four. And even his dad, who was supposed to be his biggest fan, was like, holy shit, you won it in camp. And he told him, go out there and fucking own it. And Todd Bowles reiterated that he told him, you won the job. Now go own it. Like, they're putting a lot of confidence in this kid and trust, man. And that, like, that speaks volumes because, I mean, I know they kind of did it last year, but... Dude, man, to come in there with no preseason games and win that job, it's a big deal. How does he play against Drew Brees? I don't know yet. We're going to see that, but th- that's like the ultimate test. If he, excited, comes out of, bro. if he comes out of I'm this, excited. bro, if he comes out of this game and we're, we don't say his name in bad way and he, we come out saying he made plays, dude, like we're just scratching the surface with this kid. He might be the best draft of this class, the, the draft pick of this class for us. It, listen, if he's the real deal and he's got that kind of brain, you know, that Ed Reed type of brain where he's just literally the quarterback of the defense and is back there, you know, watched all that game film and has downloaded all of Breeze's tendencies and knows the offensive game plan. If he's that kind of uh, safety, which we haven't had since John Lynch, uh, you know, two, three years down the road, this guy could be one of the best guys in football. Yes, you know, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but. It, again, it's exciting to me that Bowles believes in this guy like he does enough to put him in over proven guys. You know, Adams has a lot of a, a lot of experience in this league. Edwards has a full season behind him. Edwards uh, play, it, Edward Edwards was picking off Tom Brady in camp. Right, so, Edwards Edwards had a good camp, and he still got outshined by this rookie. Win, Winfield was making plays every day. He was getting picks every day. Edwards had a pick or a couple picks. Winfield was getting picks every day, causing fumbles every day. Uh, the, he's just going to be an all-around playmaker, man. The key is that you, you that. have all these young guys, especially in the safety room. Now, now think about this. Two, three mm. years ago, we didn't have anything in the secondary, right? Now we've mm. got a safety room that legitimately has three starters, maybe four, right? Then you have the secondary in terms of the corners. Now you have guys across that entire lineup that, I mean, dude, they've all got swagger. They can all play. They're going to be, you know, moved around a lot. I mean, dude, like... What we've come from in two, three years in terms of our secondary is exciting in itself right there. And to see the swagger that they come with and the confidence, like I said, you need that when you go into a game like this. Week one, you're facing a division rival, the guys who have kicked your ass and won the division for how many years now? And Drew Brees, Hall of Famer, like, dude, this is it, man. And like, I am so fucking pumped to see us hit that motherfucker. I cannot stand him and his stupid fucking cut on his face. Whatever the fuck that thing is. Shit stained face breeze and fucking cokehead fucking Peyton. Fuck that team, dude. I cannot wait to see us just knock those motherfuckers on their ass. That's right. Sean Payton, sure, too. Hit him. I'm sure Brady's walking around the building all week, too, saying, hey, guys, we're just playing for second. Dude, he's, I'm not the GOAT. Breeze is the GOAT. Yeah, right. We're just playing for second. <laughs> I don't even think does that that, that does comment. Tom Brady wear, yeah, does Tom Brady wear pants in the locker room, or does he just does he just throw the dick over the shoulder and walk walk around the entire time? Absolutely not. Over the shoulder. He, he walks over around. Shoulder. Yeah, just completely nude. Fuck that. Did you hear what he said in his press conference today, Sam? No, I didn't actually get to watch they, that. They one. asked him because uh, did you hear about that uh, stank where um, I guess Sean Payton in his press conference said I bought some TV to a water and now oh, I've been. Yeah. I he's heard gonna, that, but he's gonna send he his spam it. emails. So he texted Tom and's like, "Tom, can you please stop the, the spam stuff, or you continue to stop?" Because as soon as he told him that, the emails doubled. <laughs> so, so Jen and Lane asked him about that, and Tom smiled and said, "You know, me, me and Sean are really good friends, and you know, I've learned a lot from him, and he's learned a lot from me. Um, I hope he's learned a lot from me." And that was the, that was his answer to. The, she's like, "So is it, is it gonna ramp up every time you see the Saints? Are you gonna send a lot of emails? You know, more emails, gamesmanship?" And all his only answer was something something along, along the lines of, "I've learned a lot from Shauna. Hope Shauna's learned a lot from me." God, dude, he's so good at that shit. He knows how to be a troll, bro. <laughs> he is. Fuck you. He's so good at it. Um, like, uh, where is this TB12 water? 
I didn't even know there was such a thing. I, I need some of that in my, in my life. I'm not bro. subscribed to the fucking website. Like I get alerts to the TV tool. Yeah, I think it, I think it's drained and iodized with the, it comes from his sweat or some shit, what? like from his used jerseys. Mm. And then they they run it through a filter that uses an actual like diamond at the bottom of it. Filters the uh, sweat into the into a water type of form. I'll pay for it, bro. It's called I'm, H. I'm, I'm, I think I'm it's called like that. it's called H twelve O. It's got four or five times more whatever the fuck makes water water i don't know it's just there's no there's a secret obviously they're not going to give us that but i know they call it they, they refer to it as h12o it's pretty dope um it has it's no not problem. h2o it's h4o 40 there you go see and 12 makes more sense he, he doesn't wear number four h12o it's, yeah not, i got it okay yeah, yeah, fuck it up. more hydrogen less oxygen see in the laboratory it gets a go ahead i'm sorry yeah, well, no, if we wanted that kind of breakdown, we'd get Steven Beck on here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you listen. Think Steven, you think Steven Beck knows more about water than me? I think he has a scientific nah. voice. That's all we was yes. going for there. That's all. Um, affirmative, yes. Beck has, uh, affirmative, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Speaking of Steven Beck, did you, uh, did you see this new modeling photo that he posted on Twitter today? Absolutely. I was pretty upset that they didn't it. squeeze the Beck's baby oil all over his body because that would it's have been ba- perfect. It's in the background. We, way Dude, far back. It's that back would have been perfect for that workout. It would have given you pull it the up, right the baby. right glisten and everything. Pull it but, up. You but, pull it up. You're, you're, you're in front of your computer. We're, we're, we're talking about all of these weapons, man. We're talking about the defense. But there's something that's going to – it's kind of been bothering me. And it's been bothering me. Stank kind of knows. It's been bothering me since last season. And that is Byron Leftwich. Mm. I think that's taken care of, bro. Uh, Byron Leftwich is no longer the offensive coordinator. He's there, man. I'm. T- he's gonna there, be. During, during he's gonna be in that conversation. I don't see Tom Brady calling the plays throughout the entire game. I can see him going in there and having the ability to veto or change the play. But I'm kind of like fifty fifty on if Byron has learned after having that one year under his belt, or if at some point something happens throughout this season where we're starting to you know talk about. BA taking over again or taking a Here's, little more of that responsibility away from Byron because I don't know yeah. what he is right now. We don't know. Here's the problem when we when you play armchair quarterback and you criticize the offensive coordinator because we honestly don't know and this is no knock on Jameis Winston. We don't know you know if Jameis was going through his progressions the right the right way. If Jameis was making his reads at the line the right way. We do know that Jameis didn't like to audible out of plays very often. Um, you know, this offense was very good between the 20s. It's, it just seems like when we got in the red zone, either the play calling or the execution or the reads by the quarterback or the lack of being able to get out of plays that didn't make sense didn't happen. Like, yeah, but there were the too many. Me, can't for the life of me explain why you didn't go to your big – incredibly ridiculous matchup uh you know guys like oj in the red zone or a lot of times not even mike and mike evans in the end in the, in the red zone when you're you know it's they're mismatches against all these small corners or small linebackers uh so you know i guess you can criticize leftwich but i'm more anxious to see it, i'm not criticizing like, him from a, i'm not criticizing him from an from an output standpoint I'm criticizing mm-hmm. him because too many times last season we had these weird fl- like chunks of the game where he would go conservative or he would go away from what was working or it just didn't look like he knew what the fuck he was doing. And there were times where he's just like, why are you giving up right now? Why are you? And some of it came from B.A. because some of it was him saying, oh, you know, we have a three point lead. We should win this game, which is kind of old school. That shit doesn't work anymore. Bullshit. But- Bullshit. He, he said it. He said Bullshit. the defense should. That's because, he said that's the defense should win BA. this game for us. That's, that's what he, I don't know if he's BA. covering for Jameis or what. That's because BA and Leftwich are playing with a fucking uncontrollable ball of fire that is Jameis Winston. Yeah. You can throw fucking four touchdowns with one pass, but throw fucking four touch <laughs> four interceptions with another pass. That's why. Because if you're BA or Leftwich, you're like you're trying What's to protect gonna it. Happen next? Is this kid gonna fucking pirouette and throw it into fucking triple coverage, or is he gonna make the right decision? That's the problem. You can't call plays properly when you're playing with a fucking lava ball fire yeah, and you don't but, know when you're gonna get fucking burned. Yeah, but I get uh, that, but that's not that doesn't explain all of it, man. That doesn't explain no, all of it. Not there all was, of it, but I guarantee there you it's was, a big fucking There were still moments where you could tell Byron was learning how to be an offensive coordinator. Does he put it together? Does Tom help him? Does all that just merge together and just work out? Great. I fucking I'll love that. It, it I'd love that to happen. Help when you don't if you're learning <laughs> and you don't know what the fuck you're gonna get next. 
I mean, how many times did he come to the sideline like, what, bro, what, what are you doing? <laughs> with dirt cutter like hey, bro, no i get it i get that throw it into the end zone like i get that and i'm on record bro. saying that tom brady coming here is going to help byron leftwich but again byron is still a question mark that's all i'm saying he's never called he is he's never he called is. the nfl offense more than uh, basically a season and a half now under his belt two seasons you know, no season and a half season, season right. and a half yeah. 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 We, we all know who's learning in that quarterback yeah. room and it's not, yeah. it's not tom brady it's not he tom brady you might be brady. learning the 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 play terminology but as far as you know calling what plays where uh, i think i think we we know where a lot of that's going to come from um i'm not as concerned as i i would have been had we had Jameis returning this year about about leftwich specifically um, do you do you guys want to see Drew Brees get hurt so that Jameis has to come in? No, but I think that you know that <laughs> gonna see that Sean Payton is such a dick that he's going to find a way to get Jameis in there. Just it'll be in a, a, a situation like don't let them have any kind of lead. Jameis Winston will play Absolutely. if they have any kind of lead. He will get Jameis in there to have that vindication moment. That That's happening. Touchdown. It's Sean Payton. Of course, it's going to happen. Yeah, but I mean, what, imagine he puts him in there. Listen, Jameis, throw the slant, game's over or whatever, <laughs> and it's like a pick six. Like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> he would never with, see the field for us this season. Twitter, <laughs> with Buck's Twitter fucking... It would implode. Explode, bro. Be like a fucking break. mushroom cloud of break. all mushroom it clouds. Break. It would break. Twitter would fucking Twitter break, would just... We'd just get that stupid whale icon and nothing else would load. It would just be, oh, fuck. <laughs> Twitter it. broke. What happened? Jameis broke Twitter, literally. As a backup quarterback, coming in in garbage time with a lead. He threw a pick six if, and Twitter broke. What if what I said actually happens? I mean, it's 2020, guys. What if Devin White really comes in, blitzes up one of the fucking gaps... Lights Drew Brees up, gives him a concussion. Jameis comes in, lights us up for four touchdowns. What the fuck would Twitter look like then? Oh my god, I, I would I would stay off of Twitter for a I week. Would cancel bro. my fucking. I delete it from my phone. <laughs> yep, I, I couldn't Twitter. do that. No, I, I on, my phone. honestly, man, did you guys see the promo that shows Tom Brady and Drew Brees like their photos? Drew Brees looks like he's a thousand years old. Like no, what? I happened? took a screenshot of that. I posted that. <laughs> I posted his face in black and white. Just, just so you could see the detail of, oh my. of the fucking old man in his face. Yeah, he's all like leather faced, uh, grooves every like he looks Get so. Off my lawn. And dude, uh, yeah, he looks like that. And dude, I'm telling you, man, not having a preseason affects the young guys. But a guy like Drew Brees, like feeling a hit, I honestly feel it will affect him the first few times you hit him this season. And good for us, we're gonna be there to fucking hit him. I that like motherfuckers taking some hits in the offseason. And I'm not talking about on the field, bro. You can see it in his face, bro. <laughs> he like looks he's been so... canceled and buried and embarrassed and fucking, you know, what an offseason for fucking Drew Brees. And for him to climb back in and try to get behind the seat of this offense again, I mean, I think that the risk of that thing crashing and burning is there. But I wouldn't, I, you can't doubt that guy, bro. He's just been too fucking clutch in this league for too long. As much as I don't like him, he's amazing. He's man, a Hall of Famer. You that, know what, though, bro? That Drew cliff Brees exists, year, man. That, that cliff does exist. Mm -hmm. And Drew Brees in the second half of last year, you know, take it however you want. You know, Twitter world out there, people watching. He reminded me more of Peyton Manning's second year in Denver than what Drew Brees was before. He, be a, a a broken, he had a broken thumb, didn't he? No, his thumb wasn't broken, but he missed no. he missed a couple weeks with a like a sore thumb or like a bruised thumb, but it wasn't it wasn't broken. But he couldn't throw the ball down the field anymore, bro. Dude, like dude, there's dude. no secret. They couldn't take shots anymore. Just the fact that he got injured and it took him so long to get back, and Sean Payton seemed okay not bringing him they back quicker button. than yeah. necessary. He, he like Teddy Bridgewater was getting the job done. Like the writing's on the wall, dude. This guy could come to a complete just he could just come crashing hey, down Manning. this season. Uh, yeah, hey, dude. And it ha Listen, Tom Brady might have the same exact thing happen to him, but he doesn't look he doesn't look like those signs are there. Dude, Drew Brees looks fucking terrible. I'm not fucking worried. We have Josh Rosen. 
Oh my god, he's on the practice squad. We do squad. for he's free on, for on, nothing, bro. He's on the he practice came squad. For nothing, bro. For nothing. That guy came what? here on a Jameis deal. This he, came here, he came awesome here. He came here. He came here to because Bruce Arians is known as the quarterback whisperer. Whether that's true or not or what, dude, I don't care. He came, he came here came, to learn behind Brady. He came here to. It's not Tom Brady's job to teach him, but it's his job to learn from Tom for matter, sure. Man. But I'm no, I'm just saying if he's here for that reason, it, he better be the one that's you know following Tom, taking notes because Tom's not going to stop what he's doing to teach this kid. It's not his job. But well, coming under the guidance of Bruce Arians, Tom Moore, dude, that's a huge one. Tom Moore, if I don't care about Byron, he's not going to teach him anything. And Tom Brady, dude, that's going to be key. Some games in this league, chill. Uh, yeah, but he, come on, I'm no, not. His, his he's not conference. on the level of those guys. He's just not. It, his press conference today was actually pretty. It was pretty awesome. It, it actually, it would have suited you to watch it. Sam. Sam. I was I busy doing away. something for two forty five tapes him, or something. They asked. They asked. <laughs> they asked him about uh, you know the last couple of years and the moving around and you know how that's affected him mentally, et cetera. And um, he started talking about Miami last year and how the one that really affected him was getting benched after the first three games in Miami, where that that hit him and that was. Humbling was the word that he used, and I was like, Dang, "Perfect." Oh, I haven't seen this guy talk like that because usually he's the you know the cocky attitude, and he's like, "It humbled me." And I asked myself, and he he was transparent. He's like, "I asked myself, how is this guy?" He you know he stopped short, but he's like, "How is this guy starting ahead of me?" Like, and he's like, "He's smarter than me. He, Dude, he's it, more prepared than me." It's right between like, the so ears, from man. From that moment forward, I started taking more notes than ever. I started literally mirroring everything that Fitzpatrick was doing. Why is he? Why did he beat me out? And I don't know. I walked away from it positive. Like, wow, if, if he started, you know, with that mentality and coming here and took, you know, a practice squad over active roster to come here and soak that up. I mean, we all talked about this, right? You guys were very adamant about it when, with the Brady signing. I was excited about the two-year nut, and it's going to be a great nut, and I'm going to be nutting for fucking 16 straight weeks. It's going to be great. But mm -hmm. after two years... The, no the cupboard's bare. So if this kid can be something, and he, they asked him, are you planning on being here? You know, if a team comes calling and wants to sign you up the practice squad, he's like, the, the plan and what I want to do is be here all year. He goes, a fourth team, his words, he said a fourth team would be a nightmare. I don't want to leave. I don't want to move on again. So for me, that's promising. Fuck, come over here and learn behind Brady. Next year, Griff is, I think Griff, Griffin's contract's up. So you, you, the kid can be the backup next year or the third string quarterback, and then Brady leaves, and then they battle a lot with Gabbard to figure it the fuck out. But you have a young swinging dick back there that's fucking learning, and that's a top ten pick. He's not a top ten pick by accident. I, He's I got agree. the fucking talent. I he's got him. Two shitty rosters. Fucking I'm, free, bro. Nothing. Dude, we got Leonard Fournette, fourth pick and tenth pick for fucking three million dollars combined. Dude, like, what I, the I, fuck? I, I, I'm all. Effect. I'm all in, man. I I was I was a fan of his. The only knock I ever heard was that the kid was overly confident, a bit cocky, arrogant, didn't think he had to put in the work, which you're saying he realized that those things are the important things, right? He's realizing that I need to be smarter. I need to put in more work. If he comes in and that arrogance is gone and he's humbled, great, dude. That's all that was wrong with him, in my opinion, because if you were there in Arizona- Wait, are we talking about Josh Rosen or are we talking about Sam Ali? For a second, I thought you were talking about <laughs> yourself for a second, bro. No, I'm confident, <laughs> but I'm successful. There's a big difference. He, he, he There's delivers. a difference. Yeah, it thank may, you. It may be a There's week a late, but he delivers. I'm throwing touchdowns, bro. Josh Rosen ain't throwing touchdowns. And if he does, usually are you, you guys are dropping him. Are you the best? Oh, we the best, you know what I'm saying? We the best. We the best. Oh, that best dad. You lost on that one, man. <laughs> best dad. Hey, come on now. I'm the best dad ever, bro. Come on. Yeah, Obviously not, bro. Obviously I am. Look, I'm wearing it. I have boxers that say best dad on them. So. Let's do uh You guys want to do that's some? That's a little weird. No, it's not. Um, you guys I gave. I bought it for myself. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's. I need. I need a bold prediction. I I gave you guys mine. Thirteen points is all the Saints are scoring this week. That's my bold prediction. Part of my score prediction too. So that's like a two for one. I have a hot take, and then I have a bold prediction. My hot take is that Sean Payton actually died from COVID nineteen, and then he was brought back to life. Uh, he's not really a fucking human. And uh, I don't know. I, I, What's going I don't, on? I don't like. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Where are you going with this, bro? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck is this? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that shit was like. Usually, you know, I just you know I feed off of you and I'll feed into it. But I, I, I don't was know. waiting for you to help me pick it up and roll with it, bro. That bro, Sean I didn't. Died. What the fuck? 
I mean, I believe maybe Drew Brees died, but because he looks like he's all Crypt Keeper esque. He came back. He so kind of looks. Like, he kind of looks like Ren without a what hat. Is your bold take. <laughs> what? What did you say? He looks like Ren without a hat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm wow. fucking done. Yo, you need to uh, crop that red next to Drew Brees. Wow. <laughs> Just put his face on there. <laughs> what was your... We love you, Ren. Shout yeah. out to Rendax. Shout out to the pewter cast. Yep. I love you. Love you. Love I love you, 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 Skeletor. You're my favorite guy on that show. <laughs> All right. Uh, hot take. No, oh, your bold prediction. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. My bold prediction. Yeah, your hot take was that the coach died and Listen. came to life somehow. Most most of you guys are not going to see this coming, all right? But my my bold prediction is Scotty Miller leads this team in yards and touchdowns this week. Son He's the, he he comes out leads the NFL. This guy's going to be top three in the NFL in yards and touchdowns. He's going to be the number one guy picked up on fantasy rosters because all y'all slept on him. Even though I've been trying to tell you all season long, it's the Scotty Miller show. I have my receiver one. Scotty Miller, Drew Br- or Tom Brady. Give me a number. Party. Give me a number. What's his, what's I his have, yardage? I have mustard. 138 yards, two touchdowns. With Evans or without yards. Evans playing? Without Evans playing. I think Evans okay. probably sits out this game. I agree with you originally. Why why push him if he's not 100%? It's a long season, uh, and we got lots of weapons. So what you're saying is they're going to double the fuck out of Godwin, and Scotty's going to get one-on-one and eat. Yeah, they listen. The white, man, the white receiver is gonna shine, bro. They might not have to, Watson, listen, Scotty. They're all gonna shine. They might not have to double. They might not have to double Godwin. I, I'm only. I'll get to you. I just have to put this little note in there. In the last game we played against the Saints, they put. I can't remember his name, man. But they they put the other corner on Godwin, and he owned him pretty much the entire game. And there was no Evans in that game. I, I'm pretty sure there wasn't any Mike Evans in that game. Played in that game. Mike Evans played in that game. In the second game. I don't know. There was a game. I think it was the second game. Godwin was the number one receiver on that team, and they put the other corner on him, and he did a fairly good job covering him. And Lattimore was just guarding whoever else. I think it was Paraben, possibly, on the other side. So There's a lot of unrest on that team, too. Players trying to get paid, contract disputes, racist quarterbacks. (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's been a fucking weird season. Oh, don't forget that the se- their offseason started with a scandal that just kind of got brushed on the rug because 2020 is just fucking insane. Um, yeah, they were covering up pedophilia in the Catholic Church. Listen, that fucking franchise, it, it deserves oh, just nothing but fucking death and desolation for the next 20 years. Their superstar running back is getting injections in his back because of back spasms, mm-hmm. by the way, as well. Not good. Yeah, not I'm not good. not worried about that guy healthy or not. Bucks run defense proved itself last season. Yeah, we shut All those guys are back. We shut everybody down last year. Yeah. Okay, mine um, on defense. Devin White gets two sacks. Yes, I agree. And I'm going with Coach Neal. Rojo goes for under over 150 yards combined, air and ground, and two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. I like that, man. I like. What's your score? What's your score? My score predictions. By the way, you have to give us. You gave us a defensive bold prediction. We did offense and defense. You got to give a defense one stank. By the way, um, okay. my score prediction. I'm gonna go with easy. First game of the year. Twenty-seven, seventeen bucks. Okay. Uh, my defensive bold prediction, and I don't really think it's that that bold of a prediction because. Uh, um, the stats already say this guy is going to be a star in this league, and uh, I think he shines this week, and that's Jamel Dean, uh, who's just a freaky, freaky dude. Uh, I think Jamel shuts down whoever he's covering, you know, possibly an interception. Uh, Jamel Dean is, is, is going to lock down whoever he's covering, like I said. And uh, listen, man, I, I expect big things from this, this defense. For me to say a guy like Shaq Barrett's going to – have a big game you know the saints o-line has has not had any you know not face anybody but friendly fire off season then you gotta you gotta stop a guy like shaq barrett and jpp i think those two guys yeah eat. yeah it's uh should we be writing these down by the way so that we can we can go over them we got, them on, we got them on tape bro we got them yeah on we got it on tape i just need stinks stinks score prediction uh score prediction 38 33 
Bucks, we come out with a W in NOLA. Um, it's, uh, you know, we're going to start the season out. 16 and 0 road starts Sunday. Um, hopefully, I will see you in person, Sam. I don't know. You know, hopefully, you're going to be at the, in attendance at Latte's party. But if not, you'll, you'll be there in spirit where I'm making a smoked cornbread um, on my Traeger pellet grill. Uh, yeah, it's a smoked cornbread. It's going to be special. I, all I'm saying is it's just going to be damn special. Damn. I'm making, I literally bought 10 pounds of chicken wings. Damn. Pounds of chicken wings. I you wouldn't that. be able to taste it even if you came, but I need that I'm COVID negative. You. I need that negative test come back, man. That's all I'm waiting on. All right. So you guys predicted 27 17, 38 33. 33. Yep. I'm going 34 13 bucks. I'm dead fucking Ooh. serious, dude. I am dead fucking serious. And I see the 13 in the background. And yes, yeah, right. And and the first touchdown that Tom Brady throws as a buck. Is going to OJ Howard. Oh, OJ Howard. I said that on Twitter. And I was like, yeah, I saw Juicy. That <laughs> it's going to OJ. It's going to the juice. He's gonna. I think he has a big game. That's my bold prediction on offense. I think OJ Howard has Until like a six, or, or six, a six catches, almost a hundred yards, maybe like 85, 85 to one hundred yards, and he catches a touchdown. The first Tom Brady thrown. Buccaneer touchdown of his two year career here. So <laughs> it's that that's gonna do 34 to 13. I think we fucking destroy these guys. Their offensive line is not ready for these guys. I don't see how they could be. Sue, Vita Vea, JPP, Shaq Barrett. Dude, I think Via has a good game too. Like a game that you see on tape, not one of those games where you gotta go break it down later on. I think he has an impact from the start, man. And he might even get a sack. Who knows? He's not. That's not really what he's supposed to do. But I think he's just going to push that pocket around, set the tone, and everyone else is just going to eat on defense. I, I'm just I'm so I'm super fucking confident with that right now. Just super confident. What do you guys know about uh, these two young guys that made this team that really nobody's talking about? Quentin Bell and Cam Gill, both playing, uh, you know, their hybrid linebacker, defensive end on this team. They're on the 53 man roster. Um, you know, they made it over, 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 they made it over a guy like cousin Daniels. Um, you know, are, could we, could we see, you know, cause we don't have a preseason. We have no idea. Usually you see guys like this, uh, ascend in preseason, a part of Parnell Motley, who we heard about, uh, you know, quite a bit during the off season, but we got two weapons on defense. Nobody's even talking about in Quentin Bell and Cam Gill. I think they're, they're going gonna, to see a lot of them. They're going to cover the kick and punt very, very well. No, no, you're going to see a lot of them. And you're going to see a lot of them for one reason. I, Stank just pointed out to it, lack of offseason. Mm-hmm. I don't think guys like JPP who are used to playing fucking 80 snaps a game and never coming out, it's just not going to happen because they're going to try and prevent those soft tissue injuries, and it's just not worth it. So you're going to see those guys drop down maybe 65, 60 snaps a game and rotate some of those guys in and keep JPP fresh, keep Shaq Barrett fresh. Keep those because, guys, you know, you got you to be careful. Ease them in. This is our preseason. It's like college football. You know what I mean? Yeah, Anthony Nelson, not overly impressive last year in the limited, you know, playing time he got. Um, he's got some big shoes to fill. So maybe a guy like Quinn Bell, uh, who, you know, instantly becomes one of one of the favorites for the Stephen Beck's Baby Oil Award winning winners. I don't know if you saw the photo. Or maybe I need to retweet it so people can <laughs> get do. a glimpse of what this guy's actually bringing to the table. And we're not talking about X's and O's here, people. No. I, I thought I thought you were going for Mr. Bex with that shirtless picture you sent Coach Neal. Speaking of which, I'm the only one who posted a nude, almost, I had pants on, to Coach Luke Listen, Neal. I tr- uh, none of you, I haven't seen I haven't seen neither of y'all shirtless. I haven't seen nothing. I don't even re- really know what you're working with. I, oh, my I, God. I, I, I texted Coach separately from you guys i asked him hey man like are we sending are we sending full nudes or what and he said no to the full nude and i haven't had a chance to retake the photo i took Mm. a full nude photo that's the thing right i thought you were putting the black bar the black bar board you can't crop it bro you can't crop that come on i understand then you gotta crap the shadow out i get it bro it's a lot of photoshop work comes in all you know i'm not you know i've got time for that but speaking of beck's baby oil i think every week this season that we should predict each one of us 
we should predict a Mr. Bex uh, player of the game type of deal for this game. And then we'll put it to a vote. Who You know, whichever one we think wins, maybe we give away something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But my, my Mr. Bex player of the game is going to be Devin White. That's my prediction. That's mine. Oh, you can't, can't have the same one. As if he cool. needed any any other reason to get hype. He's at home, okay? He's Leonard Fournette's at home. Like, this is De- – Devin White, basically, they may name the stadium after him after all things are said and done. This is – he needs to put a stamp on that fucking shitty-ass piece of shit. I wish the hurricane took it away, Superdome. Mm-hmm. It's the worst stadium I've ever been in in my life. And I like lo- I actually like that town. I like the people Hate of it. New Orleans, Louisiana. The Fuck food, that town. Nope. the food is just phenomenal. Overrated. The football team, really, I like to wipe my ass with them, and I really, you know, I, I'm with you on that. I hope Devin White, you know, and Daisy May, rest in peace. I don't know how y'all do that shit, but whatever that is, rest in peace, Daisy May, in your honor. Full five putting it down this week. All right, so all three of us are predicting that Devin White will be the week one Mister Beck. Is that Easy what we're saying favorite. here? Easy. Listen, Easy. Look, what, what numbers on on Latte's hat? What is that number? What's this 45, say? Does it say baby. Two? Does it say 254? Oh, no, it says 245. That's That that means something right there. Oh, 45 so is going to drop Get Drew Brees. Lie. 45 is going to drop Drew Brees in his tomb. That's right. By the way, Should we announce it now? He that, no that He has no that choice he, but to win it because he definitely listens to the podcast, and now he knows that we nominated him. So. Where are we at with you securing Devin to be the spokesman for Tomb 45? Where are we at within the negotiations? Can we talk about that live we're on close. here? We're close. Or? We're close. We can't talk about it. We're, we're, mm-hmm. You know, his people are talking to our people. We're close. But uh, you need me not. to get you need me to get Khaled involved or anything? I mean, Khaled would help. You know, we the best. Close the deal. You know what I'm saying? I'll come in there. You know what I'm saying? I'll talk to I'll talk to Devin. You know what I'm saying? Because I like horses. You know, I got horses under my hood. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, I'll take them on a jet ski. I'll tell them, yo, man, when I get my hair done and then my beard done, I only get with that tune 45. You know what I'm saying? And I'll tell them to bless up. Think about the flowers. You know what I'm saying? And we going to get them. You know what I'm saying? We going to get them for you, man. I got you, fam. <laughs> so... Are we going to end this podcast the only way we know how now? Uh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, I thought it was. I thought we had a new way to end up. I, I didn't know how we had a new way. What happened to Stank, Stank's face? Thank you. Thank are you with me? He looks like he has to poop. Uh, when Khaled was here, bro, I was just trying to show Khaled I'm, I'm represent, bro. Okay, <laughs> and I can't listen. I'm ready. I'm ready for that energy. We the best. We all know that. We all know that. Are we you the ready, best? Though, Stank? Oh, I'm ready. No, no. How, how we end this episode? I have no idea how you, what you guys are talking. The only about. way. <laughs> the only oh, way. I know it now. Oh, this is week one. We're going against the fucking Saints. I know. Oh, I know exactly how we end this. I got you. Three, two, one. Fuck the Saints. <laughs>